Given the topic, where do you start? Well, I thought I'd start in the natural place with Van Gogh. Why not? Um, and the reason I'm starting with that is really just to say uh, this is, you know, that's clearly, you know, an impressionist painter. What I'm giving you now is my impression. It's just my take on this. There's lots and lots of different perspectives on this. And, you know, you, you, you may agree with some of the stuff I'm going to say. You may disagree. It's, it's basically my take. Um, and it's really to kind of just provoke a bit of thought and, and some, hopefully some discussion as well. Um, so what, where, do I, where do I take, you know, where is that take coming from? What is my background to give me my view? Um, when I've been in marketing all my working career, uh, I've been uh, in the client side, mostly in the commercial sector. Uh, started in P&G, uh, worked in Cussons, uh, various other people. Uh, and then I moved into the agency side. So I was working with uh, MNC Saatchi on Above the Line, uh, and then in DM and, and Direct, uh, people like Rap, that kind of thing. Um, and I've been with Shelter now for something like three years. That's my first charity. Uh, and the role I've got, I'm Deputy Director of uh, Communications Policy and Campaigns there. And what that is, that's a, a, a kind of a, a multi-teamed division. Um, but the ones that I'm specifically responsible for uh, include the, the online team, which is you know, both the back-end and front-end developers and editorial and so on, uh, and also digital marketing as well. Uh, also responsible for internal comms brand and uh, one other. Oh, d design. Um, <laughs> edit that bit out, please. Um, so um, that's, that's kind of uh, what I've been doing for the last three years. But I think also I had quite an interesting experience last year. We really struggled for a period of time to get ahead of online. Uh, and, you know, there was a, a real vacuum. And that went on for some months. Um, we tried getting an interim in. That, that didn't really work for various reasons. So I had to kind of step in and do that role in addition to my normal one, uh, but also being helped by an absolute hero who was one of the senior developers who kind of really stepped up into the management role as well. And that gave me an opportunity to, first of all, significantly up my learning curve when it came to digital. I'm a digital immigrant, not a native, clearly. So, you know, there's a real kind of gap there in terms of knowledge. And it was just fantastic to work with those people so closely on some of the issues that they were engaged with. Um, and also to really understand what, what does the world look like from their perspective. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, what I'm sharing today is a kind of a bit of a, bit of a, a 360 degree view, um, both from senior management perspective and also from uh, a digital team's perspective. So that's a bit about me. Um, what about you guys? And so I, I wanted to kind of get to know you a little bit more. So my question is this. How many people uh, think they've got a lot in common with this person? Show of hands, anyone? OK. Brave person. <laughs> well, perfect. Perfect. OK, not many. Um, and maybe that's, that's no surprise. I kind of, I'll be honest with you, I expected that answer. But I would suggest to you that, in fact, you've got quite a lot in common with this person in the way that his relationship with the previous incumbents really kind of captures, in, in a kind of metaphor, um, the relationship that heads of digital, digital teams, have with senior management. And it's really captured in these two comments here. Um, you know, I want to talk about the future. You were the future once. And, and similarly, the one above there. I mean, these are phrases which are both rational. You know, clearly, there's a lot of truth in that. But I think it's the emotional level that they work at, which is really powerful. Um, and, and, you know, devastating, I'd say. Absolutely devastating. And it's, it's that kind of emotion that I really want to talk about. It's, it's, the, it's the, the kind of impact, so the, the sort of emotions that are flowing in senior management, uh, which I think you need to think about as you navigate your relationships with them. Um, because, you know, you can get from management textbooks, all the rest of it, you can get all these uh, uh, various management techniques, you know, 
uh, how to do a strategic plan, whatever. I think really it's more about how you work uh, with emotions that, that counts. Um, and I think for me, you know, they act as barriers to what you're trying to achieve. So I'd say that in terms of senior management, the, you know, the kind of deadly emotions, the deadly sins, if you like, in, in the emotional space, which are really at work here, is, you know, the biggest one really is this one, fear. Pace of change. There is so much change in, in the digital sector. Uh, and, you know, what's quite fascinating, I suppose, is that, you know, uh, charities, they say they're up for change. That's what char charities want. But when it comes to senior management in charities, really quite conservative, and they're scared of it. And, and it's that lack of knowledge, that uncertainty. And I think what, what this does, it, it creates huge amounts of insecurity. And, and basically, um, because of the pace of change in, in digital, in, in, in the kind of um, opportunities and challenges you're bringing, they're worried. Is, is all of this undermining my experience? You know, I've invested X years of my working life to develop that. That is what my identity is all about. That's what my uh, talent is all about. What's going, you know, is that happening? Uh, I think also, you know, there's sometimes a willful ignorance going on. You know, do, do they really want to know? There's a pride, there's a pride which is kind of connected to that insecurity uh, about, you know, their management experience and, and, and uh, talent. And, and, you know, suddenly they're finding that those skills aren't necessarily resonating anymore. Uh, lack of trust. You, your growing area, do I trust you guys to, to do it? So there's a lack of trust, which is, is a real worry. I think the defensiveness, um, particularly say if you're, a, you're you know, the PR director or something, you want to keep hold of social media. You're not going to give that up. Um, so you know, there's, there's a kind of defensiveness around that um, and around you know, similarly other traditional channels. Um, and, and maybe there's a resentment there. Maybe, maybe there's another metaphor, which you could almost talk about father and son, you know, that passing the flame kind of thing. Um, so all of those things um, going on. So I think what that can sometimes lead to uh, is, is this kind of response and, and you know, various things that, that management might say. And, and one of the phrases that I did here in a previous employer was, you know, about digital, was basically, you know, same old shit, new channel. Um, in other words, they're trying to downplay this, this, they're trying to be defensive, perhaps in antagonistic, in fact. Um, but I think at the same time, may, maybe, you know, we need to recognise, you need to recognise, there is some element of truth there, not, not total, obviously, but some, something to think about. Uh, I think another one is, just that desire to keep control. So let's keep this in the box. Let's keep the digital team as a commissioning team. And, you know, we're going to control them. Let's keep them in the box. Or they're going to fight for you guys because, you know, this is a, a medium where it's a power play and all the divisional directors want to get some of the action. And, you know, that's pretty divisive. Or alternatively, they, they're just so bloody scared of it. They just don't know what to do. Timidity and decision. Yeah. So if you had to summarise all that, you might just say, they just don't get it. And I think, for a large, to a large extent, I think that's, that's true. There aren't that many people currently who are truly empowering it, um, and, uh, or, or rather giving you the power to, to, to help you, you know, through that and to get the most from it. So I think, for me, those are the things that are going on. So I think we can probably say then, you know, they're the problem, can't we? I don't believe that. Okay, well done. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, the reality is that, you know, there are, of course, two in the relationship, aren't there? Um, so I suppose, yes, all of that lot is going on. But also, I suppose the, the question I've got for you is, is this one. You know, do you feel that in terms of your teams or, or yourselves, that 
you actually have your own prejudices, your own behaviours, which perhaps uh, create barriers. What we've really been talking about then is, is, is really this, you know, getting in, getting in your different audiences' heads, you know, or one of my favourite books from years and years ago, To Kill a Bulking Bird, Stand in His Shoes, Walk Around in Them, that's really what we've been talking about. Um, and so, obviously, thinking about their hopes, their fears, you know, what, what is going on for them in, in their particular world, I thought it might be worth just looking at three different types of senior manager and just think about the, the different um, kind of mindsets that they might have when it comes to digital. Um, so kicking off, finance director, what, what is happening there? Well, you know, they are seeing digital commanding an increasing share of spend, more and more money going into it. They're also seeing, you know, and they're quite pleased about this, that there is activity there which is measurable, which is, you know, music to their ears, fantastic. But when you're asking for big bucks, big investment, you know, it's really not clear to them. Uh, you know, the ROI on, let's say, moving to a responsive uh, site, um, you know, tell me what that is, prove it. Um, or, or similarly changing a content management system, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult for them. And similarly, I think it touches upon what we were talking about this morning, um, social media, all they're looking at there is intermediary measures, you know, the number of likes you've got, and that's not going to sit well with them. So, you know, they've got worries, and they're perhaps also worried about their IT team. How, how is this, you know, all this new group, or this relatively new group, you know, um, starting to change the way my IT team are working, and what, it, what is going on, who's got the power, who's got the control. So, for them, they, they might be thinking, um, something like this. I've got an evangelical youngster telling me he needs 200,000 quid for the latest kit. You know, that's what's happening. Somebody's incredibly enthusiastic, uh, in an evangelical. And he's actually thinking, well, actually, you know, he might actually need this thing, but I don't know whether he does or not. I have no way of knowing. Um, and, you know, so it's all about how can you overcome that, if you like, that knowledge gap, that trust gap, if you like. Um, and I, and I think, you know, it's really what this seems to be all about to me is all about trust. If you have already built a base of trust from um, all the kind of uh, small scale activities that you're doing, uh, you know, via, um, you know, the measurability of those and you can really demonstrate, look, you know, I've, I've got a proven track record here. And I'm saying to you, you know, it's not about a £10,000 investment this time. We really do need to spend big bucks. We have no choice because, you know, the world's moving on. Whatever, yeah. Um, okay, very quickly, uh, the marketing director. Um, so where are they coming from? Well, um, they do get the fact that digital is absolutely critical to the organisation's success and, and, and their marketing programme success. They, they know it's measurable. Um, and, um, you know, so again, you know, big positives there. But they are struggling with the fact that it's constantly evolving difficult to pin down and particularly if you're doing what you were saying that you might be doing which is moving from one fad one technology to the next you know that makes it really difficult you know if, if you, you haven't consolidated your success so that's happening with them as well and then finally you know they're, they're dealing with a whole marketing mix so how is this integrating with them with with all the other elements um, and they're also recognizing that the actual cost to them you know in terms of their cost center is, is increasing. Digital talent is becoming increasingly more and more expensive. Um, you know, supply and demand, that's, that's the reality. That's going to be a real challenge to them. Um, and they might say something like this, I don't know. So, um, digital team are great, talented, creative and enthusiastic, but they're a bunch of mavericks. Um, I can't have them going off creating the Wild West, you know, kind of doing stuff in, a, in an uncontrolled manner. Um, and I can't have them hanging on to this. You know, we need everybody to get digital if we're going to, if we're really going to leverage this. Um, does that does that sound fair? Yeah. So I, I just thought, you know, one thing you, you could do here is is that you've got to show that you're a team player. In other words, you're you're not a bunch of mavericks, um, and and that yes, you have the knowledge. Um, 
She sounds like you're a taxi driver there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you, you know, y yes, you've got um, you know a really deep understanding of what's uh, what the opportunity is. You've got to share that, you know, not hang on to it as a kind of power mechanic. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep going because otherwise we'll, we'll never end. Um, Chief Exec, the last one I wanted to look at, um, what, what are they thinking? I think that actually rather than seeing this as an opportunity, they're seeing it as an area of worry. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is because they're worried, most charities are you know, traditional, there are only a few of the truly digital new entrants. You know, so most charities are traditional, they're conservative. So I think that a key worry for them is, you know, a new entrant coming in. Um, and they'll have seen uh, Avaz, you know, they'll have seen Charity Water and so on. Um, but also they're worried because they're seeing as a source of cross-divisional tension. You know, they're seeing a power play going on. And that is not good for a chief exec. Uh, and they tend to hate squabbling children, even though those children are their divisional directors. So that's going to be wor a worry for them. And also, this is an area which is taking more and more spend, you know? Um, so they are worried about it, but at the same time, they know it's critical to success. They know they've got to really be great in this area. Um, so, you know, maybe they're saying this. Uh, I don't have a clear view on where we're going. Um, do we have a joined up digital strategy? You know, do we even need one? And, and they'll be saying, you know, I, my senior management team aren't giving me the answers. Uh, and while the digital team seem really enthusiastic, yeah, how much of their plans fit with my bigger aims, my, my overall organisational aims? So, you know, is that what, what's going on for them? Um, and I think really what you've got to do is, is really connect your plans with the overall, it goes back to that pyramid that um, you were drawing earlier on, the, the, uh, the overall organisational objectives. You've got to connect those in, in your golden thread. You know, it's, it's got to be very clear. And also be that honest broker in the cross-divisional battles. Yeah. So very quickly, putting ourselves in their shoes. So what can we do? Well, I think for senior management, you can actually find out where you can help. If they are worried about their lack of knowledge and so on, maybe you can, you can give them an opportunity to get in there. So maybe you can ask them to mentor one of your team. You know, that might be a thought. And then they can almost, by, by osmosis, kind of get a bit, bit more understanding of what digital's all about. Um, gain their trust, you know. Um, so if they are the, it's the same old shit, new channel brigade, you know, you could directly confront them, but why not instead say, okay, yeah, I can, I can see in these areas, you're, you're right, you know, there are some parallels there. And we can take some lessons from the world of, um, I don't know, DM or, or above the line or whatever. Um, but also you can then, once you've done that and you show you're open to that idea, you can also show where it isn't true and, and then build their learning on, on that. And, you know, be positive first, then be proactive. So, so, you know, that kind of thought. I think also you've got to recognise that, you know, you are going to be involved in petty politics. Charities, you know, having worked in the commercial space, charities are more political in terms of internal politics than anywhere else. Because in commercial arena, everybody's got the same currency. Uh, it's all about ROI. You know, two projects, one's got an ROI of this, one's got an ROI of that. It's easy. In the charity world, you don't have that opportunity. You've got one person saying, give me 100,000 and I'll get you an ROI of this, that's the fundraising director. Another person will say, give me 100,000 and I will help this many people. It's a totally different currency. And no wonder they're fighting, no wonder there's kind of party political, you know, internal politics going on. But, you know, you're the one who's the honest broker, you can bring them together. You can use evidence, you know, you can say, look, we, we've done this, we know which, which thing works where, blah, 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 you can bring that to the party. Um, and I think also, you know, that this final piece really, just, you know, given that we've got these different starting points, senior management and digital management, 
recognise the starting points and value those differences and just think, well, what do you bring and what do I bring and, and value both of those things. Yeah. Thoughts from other sectors. Uh, so I've worked a lot in the advertising industry. What I think is fascinating about that as a parallel is that there are lots and lots of parallels with uh, digital in the sense that it's a creative, talent-driven industry full of passionate people. Um, and just like digital in the sense, you know, it's delivering means to an end um, and it's using skills that the client doesn't have. Um, so it's, it's quite common to what you're doing for your, if you like, internal uh, clients. Um, and I think the key lesson here for me is this one, uh, humility. Two, two, two kind of examples of that. Um, very politically incorrect from the 1960s, so totally politically incorrect, but David Ogilvy, who set up David and Ogilvy, uh, one of the biggest uh, agencies in the world, he talked to his creatives and his staff and he said, you know, the consumer is not a moron, she is your wife. Now, politically incorrect now, but what he was trying to say was, you know, your, think about your audiences, they're not stupid. Yeah, that's, that's true of senior management. Um, MNC Saatchi, uh, similar kind of thing, Graham Fink, creative director there, he was basically saying to his creatives, um, you know, we are a factory, we're a factory of great ads. And he's a yes, be passionate, yes, be, um, you know, be uh, an advocate on the front foot, etc. Yes, uh, you know, protect your work and, you know, um, have the tough arguments with the client. But, but at the same time, recognise, you know, that the client is, is ultimately buying whatever we are pumping out. So we need to also work with them and make sure we're making the thing they want. Yep. So that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, IT department, maybe again a parallel, similar, you know, they've gone from a kind of a, 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 kind of a transformation from a, a little department, slightly curious, beginning to spend more and more money. They are now very much a strategic driver, uh, you know, really trusted by the organisation. Um, and the way they've done that, I'd suggest, is that they started small, they sold the efficiency benefits, that's where <coughs> IT started very much about you know, ROI type arguments. They generated case studies, they, they proved it. They became intrinsic to the, the operations of the organization. You can't do without IT now. And from there, they were able to get into strategy and gain a seat at the top table. I think the last one, the last one as a parallel, is actually our own sector as, you know, itself. I think, I think we can use these examples of how digital entrants are, are blowing these guys apart, existing charities, because they um, are looking at it from a transformational perspective, not purely from a, you know, kind of operational perspective. So use these examples, I'm sure you're already doing it actually, I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but, you know, use that with, with senior management and, and you, you're gonna, you know, you've got an in. Thank you very much, I've really enjoyed uh, that I've got as, as I've got some learnings from you guys. So thank you very much. Thank you.